Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and I just want to talk quickly about a little controversy involving Model View Controller which kind of came to light for me with this comment from Sebastian M. Chung. Uh, apologies if I mispronounce your name, Sebastian. Um, but he says, uh, according to Paul Haggerty in iOS Stanford classes, model and view never talk to each other. He even drew double yellow lines. And, um, well, actually, I, I have this course on Java Swing. Uh, if you go to caveaprogramming.com, you can, you can find it there. So, Mastering Java Swing. And in this course, I, I actually follow that convention. I have it that the model and view never talk to each other. So let's, let's go back to the, um, paint program that I've been using here. So you've got the model down here containing your data. And let's draw the controller, controller up there, put an R in it, and the view here. And, uh, the controller is gonna, it's definitely gonna do stuff for the model. It's gonna tell the model what to do. And the controller will presumably tell the view what to do. That's, that's the point of it. It's the controller. And the question is, does the view, um, listen to the model? Can the view make requests for data from the model? And, um, apparently, uh, on certain courses at least, the, um, the answer is no. And, um, that this is, I think this is not the most widely followed convention. And that's the reason why I haven't followed it in this design patterns course. The, the most common convention is, um, is for the view to make requests for data from the model. The view never tells the model what to do, but it requests data directly from the model, usually. And, um, the, the kind of pros of, or the, the kind of upside of having the view not interact directly with the model, um, which I followed in my swing course and which this guy, uh, apparently follows this, um, Paul Haggerty, I think his name is. The upside is that you, you just maintain a cleaner separation there between the view and the model. And it does feel a bit weird to have the model talking to the view because you've got this serious, important, um, heavyweight system, the model talking to something which could be flimsy and full of bugs in a lot of cases, the view. And if you've got some sort of massive banking system or something, uh, where the, the view is maybe a, something that, uh, like an internet site that runs in a browser and the, the model is, let's say some huge Oracle database held in a bank somewhere, then of course you don't want the view to talk to the model. But in a lot of situations you do because uh, if, for example, you, you search for something like, I don't know, let's say J, uh, J list source code, just to take one example out of many possible examples, you'll find that in the swing library, the, the model and the view do talk to each other directly. And the advantage of that is that, uh, if, if you don't have them talking to each other directly, if you don't make the, um, the view talk to the model directly, then very often, if, you, if you're working on some fairly lightweight system, you'll end up just write, writing wrapper methods in your controller. So here we've got a model, and yet we're in a view class, but it refers to the model directly. Um, you'll end up writing wrapper methods in your controller, so the view can say something like, uh, get, you know, get latest data or something, um, or get, get row brackets 15 or something. Um, it'll have to, the controller will just have to wrap some method in the model that gets data, um, so that the view can then call the method in the controller to get that data and the controller just goes to the model and gets the data. So you have to decide which approach to take. And I, I would say there are some situations where you definitely don't want the view to talk to the model. If your model has got to be some ultra secure database, you don't want the view talking to it directly. But if you're writing, let's say, a little widget for some user interface system, you probably do want the view talking directly to the model because otherwise you'll have to write lots of wrapper methods in the controller 
purely to ferry data from the model to the view. So there's just a little bit of controversy there. And when I, when I say that the view listens to the model, this is the case probably in the majority of systems, but it's, it's, uh, it's not always the best thing to do. You kind of have to use common sense. So that's it for this time. And um, in the next tutorial, we're going to look at the singleton pattern. So join me again then. And until next time, happy coding.